Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habati fillah. We know that we're not guaranteed paradise. And we know that we can be as individuals inhabitants of the hellfire. The one who dies upon tawheedillah, meaning that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, they die as a Muslim, they die as a muwahid believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and worshiping him tabarak wa ta'ala alone, even if they had major sins, then they're tahta mashiyatillah. That means they are at the discretion of their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala, insha, yaghfir lahum, wa insha, uh, yu'adzibuhum. So if he tabarak wa ta'ala chooses, he will uh, pardon them, for the major sins, if they were drinking alcohol, they were smoking weed, they were committing zina, they were lying, they were oppressing and torturing people, they were doing all kind of e evil deeds and munkarat that are major sins, they are under their tahta mashiyatillah. And if they, and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses, he will punish them as a way of purifying them, and they will be removed from the hellfire as long as they were from Ahlul Tawheed. Have a to Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. What I want to mention, Habitifillah, is the importance of taking back our religion from the shaitan. Because the shaitan comes to you in two ways, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions, that the shaitan comes through your shubahat and he comes through your shahwat. He comes through uh, doubtful matters, things that cause you to doubt in your aqidah, things that cause, uh, call you to bid'ah, the du'at uh, bid'ah, the du'at uh, jahannam, the people who call to the hellfire, regardless if they have the libas al-Muslim, regardless of they have, if they wear the cloak of Islam, how many people are du'at al-shar, du they're du'at of evil, and they're calling to bid'ah, they're calling to secularism, they're calling to new ideologies which they have no authority to call to from Allah Azza wa Jal. And that is through the, the way of shubahat. So this is how people bring doubt to you in your religion or have you embrace other paths that cause you to divide from the, the creed and methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The other way is through sin, munkarat, you know, uh, pornography, uh, zina, uh, alcoholism, drugs, uh, fornication, all kind of various ways that the shaitan can get you to do munkarat, riba, zina, uh, um, stealing, uh, backbiting people, indulging in that as, as if it's almost a sport. So there's many different ways the shaitan can trick us. And it's upon us to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take back our religion. The best way we can do that is leave in sin today and follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, making kathrat istighfar and putting a hedges between you and the hellfire, meaning putting something between, a barrier between you and jahannam. And that barrier is going to be your good deeds. And your that barrier is going to be following the commandments of Allah and leaving his prohibitions. That is taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what I want to mention is just a couple of and some of the benefits that you gain when you leave sin. One of those things is it lifts the burden of guilt. Because the person who has some iman, they feel guilty about the sins that they do. They feel guilty after they do. But the more you indulge in those sins, your heart becomes harder and it can lead you, it can lead you to almost think that those things are lawful. For example, the one who does fornication all the time, they begin to rationalize it and say, hey, you know, I'm not really hurting anybody else. I know I'm oppressing myself. It's not so bad, I'm not hurting anyone. You know, I, I got a few girlfriends, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You know, hey, it's 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 not as bad. So it begins to make it becomes lighter in the heart to where your heart may even accept it, and it just becomes your way of life. Oh, it's difficult for me to marry. I can never marry. Uh, it's too expensive. No one wants to marry me. No Muslim families want to give to me. No this. No that. No that. Until the shaitan deceives you, and you accept that as your lifestyle. Wa yadin billah. Wa yakum min dalik. May Allah protect us from that. So it's very important. Uh, that we understand that the one who has some iman, of course, that they will feel some guilt when they do sin. So by removing the sin from yourself, you remove that guilt. Because doesn't that guilt plague you? Doesn't it feel like a sickness that just keeps, it's a cancer that keeps growing on you? 
because it just seems like you can't rid yourself of certain sins. May Allah bless us and you to leave our sins. I mean, the second point I want to mention is when you leave those sins, it makes you feel like a whole person again as a human being. And one of the sins that I want to talk about, or I just want to mention, actually two things. One is uh, substance abuse. Now that's a whole different category in general, uh, especially if someone is addiction. Addiction, we're not talking, addiction is, is something something uh, even greater and, and much more difficult to leave. Likewise, the same with uh, sexual sins and especially pornography and things like this, because it's also uh, can be an addiction. And for most people who indulge in it, they're addicted. When you can leave those sins and put those sins behind you, it is if you've lifted a mountain from yourself. Whenever you leave a sin, some sinful trait, especially something you were doing regularly, it you feel like a new human being. And because, for example, the one who's addicted to drugs, that the way they see the world, you know, especially like a crackhead or something like this, or you know, now they have all the, the meth, meth, uh, crystal meth, and way beyond that, all these opioids and all this other stuff, <clears throat> that it makes you see other human beings as just profit and loss. You know, how can I gain something from this, especially when you're really addicted? I mean, they'll maybe cut and slit their own mother's throat to get their drug or to get just a little bit of money to do the drug because their body, their whole being requires that. So they see the whole world, the way they look at other human beings is either they can gain something from them or that person's taken from them, you know? And it, it's it's a really, uh, it, it, it debases you as a human. Likewise, the one, as the studies are showing more and more, the one who's uh, addicted to pornography, they cannot even have uh, relationships, normal relationships often with the, the opposite sex. You know, and I recall talking to one of the Mashiach about this issue once, and he said, uh, and it was actually about the issue of people who really have increased, uh, you know, from their culture, they have uh, very uh, exotic uh, fetishes. So he said, uh, and it was about some particular issue, and I can't recall exactly, and he said, you know, the one of the issues with that is the people become that becomes the norm to where they just can't even you know find any pleasure just from regular relations between the husband and wife so this is one of the things that are problematic with those things so the one who's addicted to pornography there are so many harms to that there are harms physically to their body there are far, definitely harms mentally that we don't that we're only just beginning to learn about through the studies and, and so forth that people they can't look at other human they can't look at the opposite sex in a normal way if that is even their inclination that they can't see their own mother some people so corrupted because the heart becomes deceptive to where you only see things as as we mentioned that profit and gain you only see it in a sexual way you can't your boss your boss it may be covered but you can't relate to her in, as a human being and as a, in a relationship that you have to relate to her maybe if you're in a mixed environment but you're only going to see her in a certain way likewise the woman on the street every woman on the street doesn't matter if she's an old granny she's an old you know like this you know it's because it corrupts the heart and it seals the heart as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions rana ala qalubihim that they get the the ran, they get this covering on their heart. And the Prophet ﷺ described it as a black dot, and that the more you do the sin, the more it increases and covers the heart. And so the only way that that is removed is by making toba and leaving the sin, and then the heart begins to heal. Isn't that a, a fascinating mithal and, and a fascinating example that the Messenger ﷺ uh, gave, and that you can you can to solve that. You you can picture that. You can picture exactly how this happens. And if you've had sins and struggles and you've left certain sins, you can feel the healing. You can feel yourself healing from that. So I advise myself and you, let's start to heal. The last point I want to mention is it gives you some hope for the future. Once you put a sin behind you, and, and that doesn't mean that you didn't fall into it again. Maybe you left it for one week, left you left it for two months, six months, and then it fell again. And then you feel drained and horrible because you fell again. But the fact that you had some headway and you could still make Toba and still come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it gives you some hope for the future. Now, what I want to mention here is one hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is uh, Imam Muslim, he put it, or Imam uh, 
Imam Muslim in, in a chapter called Bab fi Khawatim al A'mal, the chapter of the uh, of how the last deeds are what counts. Listen to this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith of Abi Huraira, on Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, inna rajala liya'malu al-zaman al-tawila bi'amla ahl al-jannah thumma yukhtimu lahu amalahu bi'amla ahl al-nar winna rajalu liya'malu zamanan tawil bi'amla ahl al-nar thumma yukhtimu yukhtimu lahu amalahu bi'amla ahl al-jannah akhrajuhu muslim this is a hadith of Sahih Muslim Prophet uh, Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Verily a man performs deeds for a long time, like the deeds of the people of Jannah. Then his deeds are terminated like the deeds of the people of the hellfire. And verily a person performs deeds like the denizens of hell for a long time. Then these deeds of his are ultimately followed by the deeds of the people of Jannah. And this is why we ah Sunnah doesn't say so-and-so is in the hellfire, so-and-so's in Jannah. We love Sheikh so-and-so. We love this righteous person so-and-so. And we believe that they, and we hope that they died on righteousness. But we can't say so-and-so's in Jannah unless they're mentioned by Nasus. Unless they're mentioned by Nasus or it's for sure that they, even that we shouldn't uh, bear witness that they're in the hell or in the Jannah. But we believe, for example, someone who was on kufr and shirk all their life, we believe, and no one gave them dawah or whatever, that they're more than likely, the, uh, you know, that they're in Nod. But we don't say, so-and-so is definitely in the hellfire. We don't know this. We don't know what happened in the last moment of their life. Maybe something that they read, something that came to them, and then they, you know, made the testimony of faith, whatever the case may be. Ahabatifillah, the point of mentioning this hadith is it shows us that ultimately that even if we're doing good now, that we can do the decree, what was written for us, meaning not that Allah just wanted to throw us in the hellfire, but meaning that our own sins and our we can be deceptive and oppress ourselves and we can end up in the fire right before death. So that means up to death we should do good deeds. That's the point of this hadith. Do your best to make tawbah. Do your best to come next to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, the one who does the deeds of the uh, Ahl al-Nar, the people of hellfire, then what was written will overtake them and they will do the people of the paradise and enter it. So someone can spend their whole time being an oppressive, wicked sinner. Someone who's evil and, you know, a shaitan that we, we, we knew in the dunya. But then right up to the time they leave, Allah had it written for them, decreed for them, that they would accept good and they can do the people of Jannah and enter Jannah. So that the point is, do your best to die upon Tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Tawbah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ala Muhammad.